Professor Dave and Chegg here. We just learned about acid-base titration as an analytical technique for determining the concentration of an acidic or basic solution. We mentioned that the key to this technique is to utilize something called an acid-base indicator, which will act as a visual cue for when a stoichiometric amount of titrant has been added to the analyte, such that all of it is precisely neutralized. Let's get a closer look at indicators as well. Again, it is the indicator that gives us a visual confirmation when a stoichiometric amount of acid or base has been added so as to neutralize the acid or base in solution. These are substances that display a vivid color change at the equivalence point of the titration. One such substance is phenolphthalein. This is a substance that will be colorless in aqueous solution with hydronium concentration greater than 5 times 10 to the negative 9 molar, which corresponds to a pH below 8.3. But if it dips below this concentration and becomes more basic, it will turn bright pink. This is because of the acid-base reaction the indicator can participate in, and the different capacities of the indicator and its conjugate to absorb and reflect different colors. Any indicator will have a color change interval, which is a span of around 1 or 2 pH units where the color change will take place. This will depend on the pKa of the indicator. Phenolphthalein has a color change interval of between 8 and 10, so this is an appropriate indicator to use when the titration being performed has an equivalence point at a pH within that range. We can look at a diagram with a wide variety of indicators and their respective color change intervals, which will range from a pH close to zero all the way up to above 12. Some even have more than one color change interval because these are substances capable of more than one proton transfer. When performing a titration, we will select an indicator with a color change interval that is close to the expected pH of the equivalence point. Ideally, the color change will occur more or less from one drop to the next, making precise calculations possible, and when the color change occurs, we simply look at how much of one substance has been added by titration and perform the necessary stoichiometric calculations to find out how much of the unknown substance there must have been, and then use the volume to determine the unknown concentration. And that's an introduction to titration, as well as the concept of acid-base indicators. We should now feel ready to perform titrations and interpret the quantitative data collected. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.